if I'm not mistaken, I think the last time I talked about Hyperland was when Vaxbury got banned from free desktop. Now, over the past couple of months, the project hasn't stopped. It's been doing the same old Hyperland thing. And Vaxbury has been working on a project which, I'm just gonna say it, is a giant stupid waste of effort. But like a lot of other giant stupid wastes of effort, look, it's still cool. Moving Hyperland off the WL Roots library and making it fully independent. This was announced as complete in a recent blog post, Hyperland is now fully independent. Now currently the final changes are not yet shipping out to users in a stable release. This is going to be done in the 0.42.0 release. If this is not an intentional number, it should be because haha ha, funny number, it's 420 and it's also 42. You get the best of both worlds. As always though, since it is an open source project, if you want to go and test out things early, the changes are merged into the Git branch. Keep in mind though that there have been many occasions throughout Hyperland history where bad patches have been submitted and the Git branch has been just a little bit unstable, so I would recommend waiting for the full release. Now anyone who has compiled Hyperland before, especially to the dismay of many distro packages out there which don't like that it was doing this, Hyperland has always used a bundled version of WL Roots. So rather than using your system library like Sway, River, Wayfire, and most other WL Roots whaling compositors are going to use, it required a specific version of WL Roots that was shipped alongside Hyperland and compiled specifically for use with Hyperland. This was due to relying on specific, in many cases, experimental features that may not be present on every single distro shipping W roots, especially in cases of things like Debian, Ubuntu, and various other slower release distros. On Arch Linux, you probably could have gotten away with it, at least in cases where a Git version of WL Roots was not being used. But even so, by shipping a bundled version of WL Roots, it makes it much easier to test and you know exactly how users are running it. Now there is a couple of distros and distro packages that don't particularly like bundled or vendor dependencies, but in some cases, still wanted to try and ship Hyperland. Some of them tried to unvendor or unbundle WL Roots. Not really to much success, because Upstream was not particularly interested in supporting this use case. Some users tried to do it by themselves, and it was just not going to happen. There have been multiple issues open up about it, and basically they all just got closed saying, just don't ship Hyperland if you don't want to do it the way we're doing it. But now, that problem basically goes away. Since it's not using W Roots anymore, it's not using a bundled or vended version. So the problem is gone. Now, when I say fully independent, I don't mean it started entirely from scratch. This project would have taken a lot longer if that was the case. So originally, W Roots was written in C. But Vaxry is a C++ developer, I don't get it, I'm never going to get it, but he likes C++, so it's a port from the C code over to C++. We'll talk more about why in just a moment. This project is split up into two separate parts. The first part is the core Wayland protocol implementations. These don't exist in a separate project now, these are now implemented directly inside of Hyperland itself. But this isn't everything. There's also a second part. This is called Aquamarine. This exists in a separate repo and again is written in C++. This includes a lot of the low level backend stuff like kernel mode setting, the direct rendering manager, lib input support and things of this nature. And with both of these, we have everything Hyperland needs from the WL Roots project. Now, it should be noted that especially with the core protocol implementations, this is specifically being done for Hyperland. This isn't made to be a generic library to go and build a Wayland compositor off of. Look, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in the future he gets a crazy idea that he wants to go and do that and maintain a generic library, but at least for now, 
That's not the case. It's just taking those protocols and bringing them directly into Hyperland. Now, besides that whole being banned from free desktop thing, back in May, Vaxry does try to justify why he decided to go and make this project. This was a couple of weeks after it first began. I say try because I don't necessarily agree with all of his reasons. One of them being, he's just generally a C++ fan. Now, I don't get this, but Hyperland written primarily in C++, the rest of it is just like helper scripts and build files and things like that. I have become more of a fan of C++. That means going from absolutely hating it to slightly not hating it and maybe even being a bit tolerable. What these people out there exist, I don't get it. But there is another reason why he likes C++. Personally, I've always had the thought in the back of my head about stopping using the library for a few reasons, that library being W Roots. Like, for example, the multiple times I've spent dozens of hours debugging a single issue only for it to turn out to be a small typo or careless mistake that any language would catch at compile time except for C. Memory safety issues arising from the absolute lack of any documentation whatsoever of W Roots have also been quite the annoyance. Many of the modules are written in C, which makes them prone to memory safety issues, but have around zero documentation on how to properly use them, and not enough asserts to let the developer know something went wrong. Now, it's not fair to say that W Roots has zero documentation. There is documentation for basically every component. What the documentation doesn't have is explanation on what a lot of the things you're sending around are supposed to be. Here is a random function. WLR output send present. Send a present event. Okay. But there's no good explanation on what each of these are. So you need to go find where those are defined and find that documentation and then find the documentation that that probably links to and the documentation that that probably links to. And there's a reason why a lot of people when they're building a W roots based compositor basically just take Sway or take one of the other implementations that exist and then just fork that or take a lot of inspiration from the code in that code base rather than going directly from the library. Now, just because you don't want to work with W Roots, your first point of order probably shouldn't be porting the entire library over to a different language with better memory safety guarantees. There are other options which do exist, which do have those guarantees already. One of those being Mer from Canonical. Now, Mer isn't what Mer was back in the day. Mer is not its own separate thing which nothing supports. Mer nowadays is a Wayland compositor library, and again, is written in C++. Sometimes C++ and C are badly categorized, and GitHub doesn't know which is which, but I'm pretty sure it's entirely C++. Another option is Smithy, not technically by System76, but the person who started the project is now working at System76, Victoria Breckenfield. This is written, of course, in Rust. Now, yes, these libraries do exist, but you could probably argue that porting the library over to another language that is a fairly similar language and then embedding it in the project is probably about as much work as porting the entirety of Hyperland over to a completely different library, which then also has the issue of maybe some of the features that were present in W Roots are not present in that library. Maybe they work in a very different way. And now there's a lot of like weird hacky stuff you have to do to get things working the way you expected. Going with the porting library method probably gives you a more consistent result at the end. But I don't know which approach I would go for. What I will say though is that documentation is hard. Nobody likes to write it. If you're a crazy person that does like writing documentation, you are one in a million and thank God you exist because we need people like you just to make things remotely function. Another reason is speed of development. I do understand that developers may not have enough time to write proper docs. Even Simon Sir recently set off to tone down his contributions due to the termination of his contract with SourceHut. I wish you all the best wherever you end up, Simon, but this doesn't change the actual state of the library. Further reasons could include slow development pace. New Wayland features that require changes in W Roots 
tend to take ages to get merged into W Roots, like for example Tearing, where a basically ready merge request took 9 months to merge because of 100 style nits and 2 actually important remarks, or Explicit Sync which at the time had still not been a thing, even though KD and Gnome did have the implementations already. Now there is support for Explicit Sync in W Roots, but it did take a bit. Explicit Sync for anyone who's somehow out of the loop is basically the thing that NVIDIA GPUs need on Wayland to make it so the screen doesn't flicker. Not specifically Explicit Sync, but features missing is one of the reasons why I haven't done daily driving videos on River or Wavefire or basically any other W Roots Wayland compositor because for me, I cannot daily drive them. I could maybe do videos in virtual machines or swap back to something that actually works on cases where I actually need the feature, but I need individual window capture for my podcast. I cannot do my podcast without individual window capture. Three years ago, back in 2021, this was open to allow sharing of individual windows in the WL Roots desktop portal. There has been a lot of discussion about how to address this, protocols that can be implemented, a bunch of work being done. Hyperland right now is the only WL Roots compositor that has individual window capture. Now, there is individual window capture on KDE and GNOME. It's going to be there on Cosmic. It's probably there on Mer as well, but WL Roots doesn't have it. The best approach people have found is start up a headless instance of something like Sway and then like hack around to make it so it kind of emulates individual window capture. It technically works, but it's way too much effort for something I use very, very frequently. To be fair, you don't need an entire project rewrite just to add some additional features that don't happen to exist in the upstream project. You can be something like Xenokara, which is a soft fork of the Exorg project, adding additional things which might not make sense on Linux, but do make sense on OpenBSD, fixing up some weird security issues which are just part of legacy Exorg design, and various other things like that. You can do that just fine with a soft fork. The issue is when you are doing a soft fork, you do need to make sure that your changes are still compatible with what Upstream is doing. So if they make some really big change, all of your patches may suddenly be broken, and it adds this weird maintenance burden there, where it might actually just be more work than going and doing it entirely from scratch again. It depends on the amount of changes. If you're something like Exorg, which moves at a dead snail's pace, um you're going to be fine, but W Roots moves a bit faster than that. Now, it's also important to note that a lot of the changes are intended to be fairly invisible to the user. They're not supposed to break existing workflows. They're not supposed to just not include certain protocols. Being a port of W Roots from C to C++, all of those protocols that were present in W Roots should also be present in Hyperland, Hyper Roots, Hyperland, Wayland thing. I don't think it actually has a name. I'm just trying to name it right now. The functionality is still supposed to be there. All of your applications that you're running on WL Roots should be still working just fine. Obviously, whenever you're doing a rewrite like this, you're very likely going to introduce new bugs, fix bugs that were present in WL Roots, but definitely introduce new bugs. Don't let anybody pretend like any sort of rewrite like this is going to just one-to-one -one work on the first attempt. There should be no fears of fragmentation as nothing is being fragmented here. W Roots Wayland protocols are still supported. So apps designed for W Roots compositors will still work just like most do work on KDE2. So you can sleep safe with regards to that. Long term, it's kind of supposed to be like a superset of W Roots, having everything W Roots has, and then things that W Roots hasn't gotten to yet. Maybe they're still involved in Wayland protocol discussions, and maybe there is a implementation in KD and GNOME, and it's fairly likely that it is going to be supported. But instead of just waiting for W Roots to eventually have a patch merged, if Hyperland wants to just go ahead and do so, they can just go ahead and do so. 
at the end of the day, it's not forking Wayland. It's not coming up with this whole new Wayland protocol discussion that nobody else is involved in. It's still implementing those same protocols that dub your roots, KDE, sometimes Gnome, Mer, Smithy, are implementing in their own projects. And regarding Aquamarine, which I feel like was a name chosen specifically just so I can't pronounce it well, this is not intended to be a replacement for WL Roots. This is just focused on that low-end, back-end stuff, is not all of the other implementations of protocols. As I said, the protocols exist inside of Hyperland. But also, as I said, I wouldn't be surprised if one day he does decide to go make a generic library and just see what happens. Now, that does lead into kind of one of my big points here. I think doing this is really cool, but I already had concerns with older versions of Hyperland, and they exist even more so now. I am concerned about the long-term viability of the project with just how much work is being taken on here. Like most popular projects, Hyperland has a lot of contributors. Also like most popular projects, the top contributor contributes a lot of code, and then the second atop, also a lot of code, but orders of magnitude less. And then the third top, even less so, and it only goes down from there. This is the case on Vim, it's the case on Emacs, it's the case on Gnome, it's the case on every big project, especially more so when it's a younger project and hasn't been through leadership changes. So now it's not only the Hyperland compositor, along with the surrounding tooling like Hyper Paper, Hyper Wayland Scanner, which is related to the port that was done, Hyper Cursor, the Hyperland Portal, documentation in the Hyperland Wiki. Now there's also the protocol implementations that existed in W Roots, now implemented inside of Hyperland, and also Aquamarine as well. This is a lot of work, right? It is a ton of work, and it has lasted this long, and it's still going. It doesn't seem to be slowing down. In some ways, it's speeding up. But I am concerned, and maybe it's for nothing, that if Factory ever needs to step away from this project, it's basically just done, right? Like, finding someone to be a full-time maintainer on all of this stack that has been built up is going to be incredibly challenging. But what do you think? My plan right now, as I've stated before, Cosmic. Cosmic is coming out on August 8th. Very, very excited for it. But if you are a Hyperland user, let me know what you think about the port. Did you even realize it was happening? Has it affected you in any way? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of them, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Don't forget to update Hyperland, because there was a security issue, and uh, it was deleting people's home directories, so, um, yeah, fix that.